In this video, we're going to use Kotlin coroutines to start the process of using live data to populate our autocomplete text. So you see our autocomplete text is this plant name up here. I can start by typing something like Eastern, and it will show me all plants that have the word Eastern in it. Right now, that's coming from an online data source, which means that we need to go fetch some JSON and parse it every single time we start the app or every single time we want to update this autocomplete. So quick overview, and then we'll jump right in. What we're eventually going to do is set up a room database with live data where we're going to populate our plant names and then our autocomplete text can observe on that room database and it can use that database's data to populate the autocomplete. We will implement the room database in a later video, but here's where the Kotlin coroutines come in. We need to fetch data and then we need to take the data and put it into the database. So the put it into the database part is represented by step number two here, which is a long running process like saving to the database. So we have something that kicks this process off and then we're going to start this process in a separate dispatcher's IO thread. And as that process is running, you notice that the user interface thread is still able to interact with the user and update as it normally would. In other words, the user doesn't have to wait for our database to be populated. So let's jump right in. One change to our build Gradle file, we're going to use the uh, view model KTX library to give us that view model scope. And remember that scope is what manages our coroutines and allows us to stop execution if something goes wrong in the coroutine. So we're using this view model scope in the KTX library. As I'm speaking, it's synchronizing our project. Build successful looks great. Now I'm in the main view model and let's take a look at how things currently work. We see that it's invoking fetch plants and fetch plants is a function that's simply delegating right down to plant service and then fetch plants. So plant service is a service class that does a bit of heavy, heavy lifting for us. At the moment, it is updating an observable, essentially a live data observable with the plants that it gets from doing a, a retrofit call, where a retrofit is going out and fetching JSON data, and it is parsing the data into a series of objects. In this case, the series of objects is an array list of plants. So we want to make a little change here. Let's have the main view model, represented by number one here, running in the main thread, kick off the fetch plants function of the plant service class using a Kotlin coroutine, and it's going to kick it off in the dispatcher's IO thread so that the main thread can still be responding to UI events as we see in number four. First in the main view model, let's launch this fetch plants function call on plant service as a coroutine. So to do that, we're going to need to wrap it in view model scope and then invoke launch. Now, an important note, this view model scope is something that we got from our Kotlin extensions, and you have to be within a view model to use this view model scope. Now, I don't actually need to worry about saving this to a variable anymore, but that's unrelated. That's related to a major, more major refactoring that I'm doing at the moment. Note that right now we're in the main view model class in the view model scope. And now what we're going to do is make some changes to the fetch plants function within the plant service class. So I'll control click in here. Now, we, we, what we need to do here is make this a suspend function, which means that essentially it's eligible to be called as a coroutine. That means we can specify our thread context and we can invoke other coroutine functions from this function. What we're going to see in a minute is it's going to really, really clean up a lot of the retrofit work that we're doing here. And that should really sell you on the value of coroutines because it's going to take a lot of this code and blow it away. Let's start by designating that we want this to run on our dispatcher IO thread. So we'll say with context and then dispatchers.io open curly. Uh, let's go ahead and import a couple things here. Open curly and then close curly. Move the close curly down below. Whole lot of stuff here, right? Okay. And uh, note it gives us a little carrot that says with context and it says all of this stuff is running within that context. Uh, do a, now we remember I removed that return value of plants so we can actually take this away if we want to as well remove the mutable live data. Reason why I'm doing that is right now, the way this function works is it goes out and it fetches JSON, parses that JSON, and then it makes that available via an observable so that our autocomplete text view can see the plants that it's parsed out of that JSON. We're gonna do it a little different way. 
we're going to go ahead and grab the JSON, then we're going to push it eventually into a room database, and that room database will be our observable. So that's the grander refactoring I was talking about, but I don't want to muddy the waters between that and what a Kotlin coroutine is. I just want to clean up a couple things while I'm here. We can get rid of our immutable live data since we're doing that. Now, here's where things get really cool. Take a look at all the retrofit stuff that we're doing here. We have a call, and then we're enqueuing this call, and then we're hearing back essentially asynchronously. We're hearing back either an on response or an on failure. In the on response, we're getting back an array list of plants. That is one way of threading. But now that we're using coroutines, we don't need to thread that way. So let's take a look at our retrofit client instance, and you see it has a reference to this thing called iPlantDAO. Let me make a change here. Instead of fun get all plants, let's make this suspend fun get all plants, which once again means that it can run as a coroutine. Now let's change the return type from call array list plant to simply array list plant. And let's go back to our plant service class and now take a look. Instead of service get all plants returning a call and us queuing up an asynchronous call on here and then waiting for an on failure or waiting for an on response, we don't need any of that call anymore. What we're actually going to get back is an array list of plants. And therefore we can delete all of this. Boom. Doesn't that look a lot cleaner? I'll tell you that it took me a long time to figure out that it was really that simple. I kept thinking, man, there has to be something else that I need to do here, but that's it. And curlies are off a little bit. Let me just clean that up. So, okay, cool. Let's say update local plants. Let's make a new function called update local plants. And let's pass in that plants collection that we got up above. And this is a new function, so I'm going to say create new function. Now uh, we see that that is getting in our collection of plants as an array list. A couple things I'm going to clean up on this function. First of all, let's not worry about return type. Secondly, I'm going to go ahead and make this a suspend function as well, which lets me call this as a coroutine also, so start another parallel process. We essentially have one process here, which is grabbing the data from the internet, parsing it as from JSON to plant objects. Now this is another function, and let me put a bit of javadoc over this, that says store these plants locally so that we can use the data without network latency. So in other words, store it into a room database. Great, we'll fill in those details in a little bit. Uh, but let's go ahead and invoke this as yet another launched coroutine. So for that, I'm just going to say coroutine scope, which is essentially what scope am I working in. And then we'll say open curly. And let's go ahead and import. And then say launch. And then open curly, close curly, just like so. And once again, import that. And let's take our function call here and let's put it inside of the launch. Boom. And save. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to do a couple of things. Of course, I'm going to snap a, a breakpoint. Uh, also, I'm going to say delay. We'll say 30,000 milliseconds, which is essentially half a minute, 30 seconds. Go ahead and import delay. Delay is a function that's available to us on coroutines. It simply delays it, kind of like a thread.sleep. It delays it, and the reason why I'm putting this in is I want to show that our UI will still be responsive even while we are waiting. Uh, okay, in the update local plants, I'm going to say delay. We'll give this one 30 seconds, uh, 300 milliseconds, sorry, 30,000 milliseconds as well for 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint in here. I'll say var size of plants equals plants dot size. And that's simply to confirm that we have indeed received all of our plant collection and that we can use that plant collection now to update our local room database. Uh, put our question mark there to indicate that this is nullable. All that means is if plants is null, then we'll essentially get back a zero in result here. So a couple of breakpoints I've set. We'll set one in main view model as well. Let's run up here and set one at the very top. And with that, let's take a look. Our application has launched now, and pay special attention. Notice the first breakpoint has hit main view model. Notice that the user interface is frozen. It is not painted. And the reason is we have a breakpoint set in the UI thread, so the UI thread cannot make any progress. So let's go ahead, choose F9, and let that continue. And let's go back, 
And you see now we're in the plant service fetch plants function and notice that we're within our coroutine function on the dispatcher's IO thread. So take a look. You see that I can go through and I can update and maybe fix the spelling of this one uh, that has been bothering me for a while. I can interact with the user interface while this coroutine is essentially frozen waiting for my input. So once again, this is plant service and retrofit is what's going to take our endpoint which contains over 5,000 plant definitions. I've pulled up the endpoint here and you see it's JSON formatted, 5,000 genus species cultivar, so on and so forth. So it's going to parse that and our UI is still going to be responsive this entire time. You see, I can click around like so. I go ahead and choose F8. This call will take a few moments because this is where it's downloading and parsing that JSON endpoint. So you notice it does take a few moments, but of course UI still responsive this entire time. Okay, we've heard back and now I'm going to choose F9 and notice the next breakpoint to hit is in the update local plants function. And that's the one where we realize we have the plants in memory and we simply want to store them into our database. Now, look at this, plant size, you see 5,923 plants. I can maybe even click on this mouse over and you can see sure enough, several, several plants that are here. And now it's just a matter of saving them locally. I choose F9, which is going to hit the delay. And uh, this delay breakpoint will likely pick up in just a moment. But nonetheless, even if we don't wait for it, you can still see UI Interactive, all of this work happening on a background process. And sure enough, there's our delay. I'll go ahead and choose F9. Now, while we're here, there's a neat opportunity to refactor this and look at another coroutine example. You notice that it doesn't make sense to invoke update local plants until plants has been populated. And we know that plants gets populated in its own suspended function, which means it can run as a coroutine. So let's use a sync await. In this case, the fetch plants function is going to kick off the retrofit JSON parse and in a sync coroutine. When that's done, it's going to come back and it's going to tell our update local plants that it's ready to go by using await. The changes here are quite straightforward. We simply wrap our service.getAllPlants, remember service is our retrofit client instance, get all plants, getting our JSON data. We say async, and then we wrap it in open curly, close curly. Let's just clean up a little bit here. We can uh, remove a few dis distractions. And then we say plants.await. So what will happen now is we go off and we fetch the JSON data, we parse it, and then only when that JSON data is ready are we going to invoke update local plants. Let's give it a shot. We saw before the UI has rendered. We're in the main view model, which is on the main thread. I'm going to choose F9. Now we're in the dispatcher IO thread. I want you to see some things in real time. And so I'm going to explain what's going to happen before it actually happens. I'm going to choose F8 here on this line. That'll take just a moment. I'm going to choose F8 on line 18, which is where it's going to grab that JSON data and parse it into objects. About 6,000 different plants, that's going to take a while. I'm going to choose F8 over line 20, which means I'm ready to run update local plants. However, what we're going to see is interesting. In theory, line 30 would be next to run because that's the first line of code in update local plants, but it's not going to run right away. It's going to wait until it hears back from the plants that the plants are ready, because note, we have this await function called on plants. When the plants are ready, we're gonna see a breakpoint kind of pop up here on line 16 for a moment, and then we're gonna see the breakpoint hit on line 30 when I choose F9 from there. So what I wanna show you is that Choosing F8 on line 20 does not immediately invoke the first line of this function, but instead it waits until we get results from retrofit. Let's go ahead and give it a go. So F9, F9, delay, and there we go. So you see when we had that delay, that was the time between when we made the call to get the plants and when the plants were actually ready. In other words, we heard back from this await and that is when this update local plants is eligible to be called. I'll choose F9 again. It's going to wait for 30 seconds, but just as we saw before, the UI is still active and usable as this background thread is doing whatever it does. So as always, I hope this video has been helpful, this hands-on example of Kotlin coroutines in Android, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.